In this video, we're going to be talking about the dual native ISO capability of the Panasonic EVO 1 camcorder. And dual native ISO comes from the high-end Vericams. It's really a breakthrough technology. Most cameras have a single base sensitivity, and that's the amount of light hitting the sensor, at which point the sensor is producing the maximum image quality with the least amount of additional noise. Most cameras have one setting. This camera actually has two. It's got a native setting of 800, which is more suitable for maybe uh, daytime exteriors, brighter light conditions where you don't need the camera to be that sensitive. You can start out with the 800. 800 is pretty sensitive. It's, it's pretty light sensitive. That's where you would start with the 800 ISO in those scenarios. It also has the ability to be a base native ISO of 2500. And that's much more useful in lower light scenarios, nighttime or interiors where you don't want to bring in a whole bunch of very powerful lights. 2500 ISO is really very sensitive. They're both considered native ISOs because of magic wizardry and secret sauce in the camera. But basically it means that the amount of noise in the signal is going to be about the same, whether you're at the 800 base ISO or the 2500 base ISO. So go into the camera settings menu, choose EI, that's shorthand for exposure index. And then you'll see a menu that if you go to the ISO select, you have two choices, 800 base or 2500 base. Once you've selected the base ISO you want to start from, now we have to select the actual specific ISO that we want. Why would you change away from the base ISO? Sometimes it's too sensitive. Sometimes it's not sensitive enough. I mean, the ISO range you can choose on this camera ranges from down to as low as 200 to as high as 25,600. Huge range that we can go from. But it's a two-step process. First set your base ISO, then choose the actual ISO you're using from there. So the ISO select lets you choose the base, and then you go down to the 800 base ISO menu item, and there you can choose the actual specific ISO that you're looking for. There's actually two of those menu items because there's one for the 800 ISO base and there's a separate menu item for the 2500 ISO base. So set your base ISO and then go in and choose your specific. And you can set that ISO here in the menus or you can set it from the home screen or you can establish on the user toggle switch ISO and then just dial the gain up or down from there and it will take you through the entire range that that base ISO is capable of. What I mean by that is, if you set your, your base ISO to 800, then you can cut it down all the way down to 200. Let's say you're shooting in a daytime exterior under the sunlight. I mean, it's the brightest light there is. You want the camera to be as, as least sensitive as it can be. So we would crank that ISO down to 200. That will give us super clean imagery, cut down on any potential noise, and it will let us open up the iris as big as possible. So you might wanna start with 800 and go down from there. But if we were shooting indoors and we need, you know, 5,000 or 10,000 ISO, you can't get there from the 800 base. The base ISO has a range from 200 up to 2,000. That's the whole range that it's got. You can't get beyond that. If you want more, let's start from the 2,500 ISO. And this one is great for shooting indoors, low light scenarios where you want to use small fixtures or even practical fixtures are already in the scene and you want them to be functional lighting instruments. Starting with 2500 ISO is great for that. You can take it down a little from there, down to 1000 ISO, but mainly you can take it up from here, all the way to 25,600. A little bit of an overlap there then, you know, between 800 and, and 2500, you got a range where both of them can get you. If I need 1000 ISO, should I start 800 and go up to 1000? Or should I start at 2500 and go down to 1000? It's up to you. Take a look at what the monitor looks like, but in my experience, I like to start and vary as, as little from the base ISO as I can. So if I was gonna go to 640 ISO, I would rather start at 800 and go down one notch to 640, than start at 2500 and come all the way down and down and down and down to 640. And just find that you get cleaner images if you keep your ISO as close to a native ISO as you can. In fact, you can do exactly that. You can configure the camera that it only will go to base ISOs so that the entire menu wheel, when you go to look at your list of ISOs that you can go to, there's only 800 base and only 2500 base. That's an option if you wanna stay in strictly native ISOs. So that's how you set the ISO and the dual native ISO on the Panasonic EVO 1. 
Hope you found this helpful and stay tuned to this video series for even more tips and tricks on how to use your Panasonic Evo One. Panasonic.